Hi, my name's Fred McNeil, and I'd like to thank you for watching QAC TV7. Me and the TV camera crew have been going around and filming different parts of Queen Anne's County and bringing to you some poetry. We thought it'd be a little change of pace from our normal reporting. Now it's a beautiful day, 65 degrees, the birds are singing. We're beginning to go from winter to spring and it's delightful. I thought we'd read two poems a day. The first, Robert Frost, who everybody in my generation, when they think of poetry, they think of this old silver-haired gentleman, Robert Frost. Uh, and the words New England and rustic seem to come up to our minds. But did you know Robert Frost was actually born in San Francisco? His father was an editor of a newspaper, and then he moved to Massachusetts. Anyway, I'm going to read what I think is his best poem, or one of his best poems. It's Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. And just before I start it, I still have ingrained in my mind the day John F. Kennedy became president. Robert Frost read a poem, and all the baby boomers remember Robert Frost in front of millions of people couldn't read the poem because the glare was so bad in his eyes. And Lyndon Baines Johnson, as a perfect gentleman, stood up, took his hat, and blocked the sun. And this classic scene of Robert Frost reading a poem with the future president and vice president helping him out. Okay. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bell a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Those last three lines were immortalized in many ways by John F. Kennedy. When he campaigned for president in 1960, he would end all of his, if not most of his, political rallies, because he would go from New York to Pennsylvania or whatever, and he'd always end his uh, uh, event with, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and hop on a plane and head to his next site. All right, that was Robert Frost. Now I thought we'd get a little more rural, and we're filming down in Millstream Park in Centerville. Wendell Berry, another American poet. He's also a college professor. Uh, he's written books, essays. Uh, many people consider him a naturalist. He's written many essays on nature and, can, and how our lives would be better if we return and understand nature better. He wrote a wonderful poem called The Peace of Wild Things. And this time of strange TV headlines and newspaper headlines and a world that is sometimes we all shake our heads, listen to the words and let's talk about a way to relax is going to nature and seeking his or her help. The name of the poem is Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of my life, and my children's lives what they may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and where the great heron feeds. I come into peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in grace of the world, and I am free. And Wendell Berry, ben Berry reminding all of us, get outside, enjoy Mother Nature, and life is certainly much easier. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC-TV, and we'll see you next time with more poetry.